it's so exciting to see you come back to the stage. And I feel like anybody who has been on Broadway always has that urge to come back. And I think this is right around your debut of 35 years ago, right? Yes, you're right. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that's right, 35 years ago. That's when I first was in a show in New York, yeah. So what brought you back this time? What what made you come back? Well, what's happening is um, there's an uh, abortion advocacy group that was created in New York City by a group of theater artists called A is Four. And so together with the Playhouse Creatures Theater Company, they are producing this reading that we're doing of this play called Griswold. This play dramatizes the life and the work of this woman, Estelle Griswold, who I have the honor of playing. And I've really learned a lot even just working on the play so far. So she engineered her own criminal arrest, which then resulted in the landmark Supreme Court case, which establishes, which established the right for sexual privacy. And directly paves the way for all the other guarantees of liberty, including the right of, of same-sex couples to marry. So it's this amazing woman, incredibly important case, and um, it's the coming together of these, of these two organizations, AS4 and the Playhouse Creatures Theatre Company, who are dedicated to activism and art activism. Her story is so incredible because she orchestrated her own arrest. Do you ever want, I mean, I always wonder like, how did somebody come up with like, that was going to be the way to make change? You know, I don't, I don't know that anybody, you know, a lot of people don't think like that. And so I always find that backstory of the story so fascinating. Exactly. Yes. And that's really what the play uh, dramatizes in the most kind of vivid way is that she was an advocate for contraception and, and reproductive rights for women. And uh, so she knew that she had to get it into the courts. And, and she figured out that the only way to do that was basically to get herself arrested. I think it's also fascinating her age when she did it, because I feel like uh, oftentimes, you know, women hit 50 years old and, you know, they're like, am I invisible? Am I not seen? Am I, you know, I'm in, I'm in my, my midlife right now. And those were a lot of the fears I went through. But to hear somebody doing that, you know, when she could have just said, well, somebody else can, can handle this and do this but she was out there and put herself up front. I think that was a really special part of it for me too, upon hearing her story. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. Um, there's so much stigma around uh, women and aging and all of it is really created by a culture. And we, um, as women who uh, have our voices and have our experience and have our professional experience and our personal experience, need to remember that that isn't necessarily true for us, that we can feel this great sense of empowerment. And really, in a way, one becomes more free as one gets older, yes. because um, you're not kind of saddled with a lot of the same concerns that you had when you were younger, maybe. It's so important that we not take on that message of feeling somehow ashamed for, uh, for our age. It's really, uh, it's a myth. It's just such nonsense. And, and now we have that opportunity more than ever as women to, to just dump that garbage and, yeah. and live our lives in the way that we feel is authentic and give voice to things that matter to us. I'm playing the lottery and I won $15,000. Why didn't you just tell me? We barely have enough money to retire on. This is no time to risk it. Yes, it is. What? You know, no matter what you do, you do it with grace. But I, I was flipping through and I did see Jerry and Marge go large. And being a news person, I was familiar with the story uh, the real of the real couple. And I was just curious about that. I mean, that looked just like a really great role to play. And Brian Cranston is, you know, he's just a, a favorite of mine um, through the years. And also, a, you know, obviously a fellow broad, Broadway actor as well. Oh, he's amazing. It's a true story about this couple from Michigan. And Jerry is a numbers whiz. He was looking at uh, the lottery and the rules for the lottery. And he noticed that there was a, a flaw in the way that it was constructed. And that turned into a 10 year project where he and his wife, I play Marge, his wife, and they brought in their family, they brought in their community and they would go and buy huge amounts of lottery tickets. They didn't cheat. That's what's so right. important and it's important right. for them. <laughs> they always wanted to, right. us to emphasize that. They didn't cheat. 
they found a flaw. Jerry found a flaw. They and their friends and this whole group that they were a part of made millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, it's just a great story. I I loved it. What was the, what was a real couple like to meet? I was curious because I, you know, I saw the picture yeah. at the end and I, I just, I, I like fell in love with them when I originally heard this story. So we went and met them before we made the movie and they're just down to earth Midwesterners. Their personalities are kind of a little bit reverse that what we did in the film. Marge is so incredible. I, I came from the Midwest and I, my parents are from the Midwest and um, she reminds me of so many of my relatives. She was completely unimpressed with being uh, the focus of attention. Jerry's a little bit more, kind of, he, he enjoys it a little bit more talking about it. And, and he's just this brilliant guy. She's, um, she doesn't need that. And in, a, and in a way that I completely respect it. In the movie, we only have a couple kids. In real life, they had six children. Oh, and I she didn't know would. That. Yeah, and she <laughs> ran a tight ship. Her daughter told me all about it. We laughed. We you laughed. have to. <laughs> oh my God, we sat on the we sat on the back porch and just talked and laughed. And you know, she made their clothes. She sewed their coats. I mean, she's she and and she her house was immaculate.